The people involved in this manipulation are, yes, exhibiting their state of being at this time in their eternal journey. They are exhibiting their attitude to life, the state of their mind. Okay. But they're also making a massive statement about us, which we would do very, very well to acknowledge and think about. I feel we're now in a time of enormous change, a great jump in human evolution, and therefore an energy of change is bringing this stuff to the surface, and its secrecy, its great power, is being unveiled. What I've just described is actually a massive statement about us because it can only happen because of us and the fact that we have conceded our right to our own power and our own control of our own lives. I heard this line, we create our own reality. And I thought, yeah, that sounds right to me. But there has to be a means through which we do it because there is no such thing as the paranormal and no such thing as the supernatural. They don't exist. Everything that happens in creation is the result of the natural laws of creation and the interaction of energy. What we call the paranormal and the supernatural is merely that which the system wishes to push away. Because everything in creation is the same energy, and energy is consciousness. They are the same thing. So, the energy that is our minds and our emotions and us is the same energy that is every blade of grass and every insect and every tree and every breath we take, every drop of rain. Just as water, clouds and ice are the same substance in very different states of being, so everything that exists in creation is the same energy consciousness in different states of being. We are like droplets of water in an ocean of consciousness, unique and individual, yes but together forming the whole. We are each other. I am you, you are me, I am everything, and everything is me. Same with everyone. And this gigantic, infinite mind we call God, or whatever name you want to put to it, operates on multidimensional frequencies. But for me, and increasingly open-minded science, creation is actually broken up into wavelength frequencies sharing the same space. All the radio and television stations broadcasting to this area are occupying not just the space around my body, but the space my body is occupying. We're on different wavelengths. Therefore, one radio station, unless it's very close in its frequency to another, operates in complete oblivion of all the other wavelengths. Everything that exists in creation is sharing the same space that our bodies are occupying and our minds are occupying. What is that line we hear? The kingdom of heaven is within you. Everything that exists is within us. So when our consciousness, thinking, feeling, emotional us, that part of us that is eternal, enters the physical body, the genetic spacesuit as I call it, to experience this physical life, this three-dimensional frequency, world, dimension, we are not a blank sheet of paper. We are already unique. The unique sum total of all our experiences. Matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration. We're all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. We are the imagination of ourselves. What we imagine ourselves to be is what we create as a physical experience, second by second by second. This magnetic electrical pattern going out, we call vibes. You know, we have everyday expressions and words for this. We have a word which we use all the time, atmosphere. What is atmosphere? Atmosphere is the energy field of a room that has been turned to be negative, exciting, or positive, or happy, or whatever, by the thought patterns, the vibes, the imagination of themselves, of the people involved. People go into an old house where there may be a lot of negative events, or they go to a, uh, the site of a, a, an ancient battle, and they go, ooh, tell you what, mate, ooh, it's eerie here. Ooh, don't like it here. Something about it. We're picking up the energy, negative in that case, that has been created in that state by the vibes, the thought patterns of people 
who have gone through negative events there. Atmosphere, football matches, sports occasions. You could touch the atmosphere, mate. The excitement was amazing. What is excitement? What is this atmosphere? It is what people generate on this vibe level. So, as these vibes we're putting out, these unique patterns are, are magnetic. They are pulling in constantly other energy fields, which we know better as people, places, ways of life, experiences. In this way, second by second, we are creating as a physical event, physical experience, an exact replica of our subconscious imagination of ourselves in the people, places, ways of life we experience. We are creating our own reality. The victim mentality will always reproduce the victim reality. This world is awash with victims because this world is awash with people who have been conditioned to see themselves as victims, powerless, under the control of somebody else. Therefore, they create that reality. And we've all been there, as I say, but for some it becomes like permanent squatter's rights in the psyche, the victim mentality. And it doesn't matter how you fuss around and run around at someone who's in victim mode, poor me, you know, someone else is control of my life and they must do something about it, and oh God, I'm ever so unlucky. Doesn't matter how you try to help someone like that, they'll always be in victim circumstances because the vibe they're putting out will constantly pull in that physical reflection. The change, which is why vision is so important, the change that gets the victim out of that situation is to realize there are no victims, only states of mind that perceive themselves to be victims. The moment we say, hold on a minute, hold on a little, I'm not a robot, I'm not a clone, and I am certainly not a victim. I'm in control of my life, and I'm going to get out of these circumstances that I'm in at the moment, because I've created them, and I'm going to get out of them. At that point, the vibe changes. So what it pulls in changes. Suddenly, people get bits of luck. An amazing coincidence is up. You'll never guess, mate. It was ever so lucky. That guy came into my life at just the right time and helped me get out of that circumstance. I couldn't believe it. Not luck at all. Creation by a state change state of mind. What are we bombarded with throughout our lives? Messages about limitation, about the fact that we can't do this, and I can't, I could never mentality. A fear of experience, because so much experience is denied to us by people saying, you can't do that, you shouldn't do that. So we're constantly being hit by this limit, sense of limitation. I can't, I could never, I'm frightened to. So we have a limited imagination of ourselves. I don't know about you, I have never in my life met a single ordinary man or woman ever. All I meet are extraordinary people. But we are conditioned to see ourselves as ordinary. Ordinary man and woman in the street, I've got no power. Therefore, we play that part. We read that script. We act out on the movie of life, this three-dimensional holographic movie we're part of here in this three-dimensional world, we play the part. And therefore we live that reality. Limitation of I can't, I could never, I'm ordinary. So we set up the circumstances in which those who see themselves as ordinary can be manipulated by those who realize the game. The power that is used to manipulate the human race day after day is merely the power the human race gives away day after day. That's all. So there we are in this hassle-free zone pyramid, right? And everyone's on everyone else's shoulders and these different levels in the hierarchy of society. And each level is saying to the one below, don't you move, you stay where you are, I'm depending on you. You know, if you, if you walk out of there, the whole system will be collapsed, it'll be chaos, there'll be oh, hunger and oh, it'll be terrible. So, oh, all right, I have to stay here. And at each level of this pyramid, everyone else is terrified into stepping out of it and getting a cough because they're terrified of the consequences of not being in this prison. And at the top of this pyramid, being held up by this fear, are a very few people who are passing down through the different levels the messages they want the whole pyramid to accept as reality. It needs us to get a cough and step out of this nonsense.
Those three things are to respect our own right to be unique and to express that uniqueness. Crucially, to respect everyone else's right to be unique and express their uniqueness. And thirdly, that no one ever seeks to impose what they believe on anyone else. At that point, this, we'd have a great explosion of human potential being unleashed from the prison of fear where it's spent so long. But because no one seeks to impose what they believe on anyone else, free will is not denied. Once we respect our own right to be unique, we cease to be a slave to impose thought and behavior. Once we respect everyone else's right to be unique, we cease to be a police force of the hassle-free zone and all the other slaves. And if we don't seek to impose what we believe on everyone else, no one's free will is denied. And what a difference that would make. If you take the symbology again of the herd of sheep, hundreds of sheep across that hillside, farmer arrives in the pickup truck, gets out, stands there on the stick, wagging the iron eyelids. One or two or three of the sheep start to walk towards him. But now the sheep mentality is very different. The other sheep are not following the one in front. They're celebrating their uniqueness. They're following their heart. They're expressing who they really are. What on earth does the farmer do? Because now it is mayhem from his point of view. Because the bar bar mentality has disappeared. So the farmer might at that point, symbolic of this global clique, he might then fall back on old faithful. We'll frighten them to death. Get them flipping sheepdogs out. The same sheep that are expressing their uniqueness because they're now in their own power. And they know that they are infinite in their power because there are no ordinary men and women in the street, just extraordinary people. Because they're in their power, they realize that fear is their creation. And fear may be stimulated out there, but we choose whether to fear or not. Nobody else. Just a choice. All that's happened in that example is that the sheep have let go of fear. They have let go of fearing being what they are unique. And the whole situation has changed. And if you bring that into the human experience, everything that I've talked about tonight becomes impossible. Once we express our uniqueness and stop condemning everybody else for expressing their uniqueness because it differs from what we think they should be doing. And for me, we are the front of the snowplow generations here. There is a, a global awakening going on that's changing the nature of people's perceptions of life. Symbolically, I feel that what's happening is there are vibratory changes going on around the planet as a natural course of human evolution, which are cracking this eggshell, this low vibrational energy that is our prison. And so the light, the multidimensional self, the infinite self is starting to get in and reconnect with this self. If we can let go of our own fear, we can remove fear from the world. Because the world is merely the sum total of human imagination of ourselves. When we change our imagination of ourselves, what we call the world dramatically changes. The world is just a second by second physical replica of the human mass imagination of ourselves. When we let go of our sense of limitation, our sense of fear, our sense of I can't, the world ceases to be a prison because we have created it. And all it is, like everything else, is a choice. A choice between fear and love. That's all it is. We can choose to be frightened. We can choose to hate. It's a choice. Or we can choose not to fear. And we can choose to love. Not love on the basis of, I love you if I fancy you, darling. But I love you because you exist. I love you whatever. I love you without condition. And if we want to change the world, it has to start with self. Fear, anger, hatred, condemnation, dictating what other people should be. That's the world we've got. That's the prison. But paradise is waiting. It's a thought, an attitude away. That's all it is, a choice away. Love. If we love each other and love the world, our lives are fundamentally changed and the world is fundamentally changed. And we are the generations, strange as it may seem when you survey the world today, we are the generations I passionately believe who are going to love the world into the paradise it really should be and was always designed to be. Changing the world is not something in the future anymore. Oh, I hope it will be better for the kids. It's here and now. We're going to see it happen. More and more people across this planet are screaming yes to that question. And we are the generations who are going to love the world to a paradise.